Jesus. Jesus. No, no. Put your eyes on him all over the room. Lift your hands all over the room. Keep singing that, Nikki. Here we are, Jesus. Just all over the room, just sing this. Father, fill this room right now with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Open our eyes, Abba. Open our ears, Abba. What do the angels see? What do the elders see? We have to know. We have to know. We have to know. was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice like a trumpet saying come up here and I will show you things immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one set on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance with an emerald rainbow surrounding him and around the throne were 24 thrones, and on them sat 24 elders, robed in robes of white, sitting on thrones and crowned with crowns of gold. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne. There was a sea of glass like crystal, and I saw around the throne and in the midst of the throne four living creatures filled with eyes around and within. One looked like a lion. One looked like an eagle. One looked like an ox. And one had the face of a man. And they were filled with eyes around and within. And they do not rest. Day or night they do not rest saying holy. Holy. Holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever they give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, you are worthy, O oh God, for you have created all things. And by your will they exist and were created. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I heard a loud voice saying, who is worthy to take this scroll and open up its seals? No one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was found worthy. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look at it. But behold, one of the elders came to me and says, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
The root of David has prevailed. He 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 has prevailed. Lift the shout. Lift the shout. Lift the shout. of the altar in the Word of God is found in Genesis 8 when Noah came out of the boat with his family. He lands on the Mount Ararat, which means the curse reversed. Noah comes out of the boat and the first thing that he does with his family, he builds an altar. He builds an altar, a place where God and man and the land converge. And I believe with all my heart that many people here and those viewing have gone through intense floods, intense storms. And I believe prophetically by the Spirit of the Lord that the curse is ending. Seasons are ending. Seasons are ending in our marriages in our families, with our children, with our finances, a shift, curse, curse, is being broken, is being broken, being broken, being broken. Right now, if you've been in one of those seasons, the last seven to 10 years have been some of the most intense, whether in families, or marriages, or your children, And I also believe that God is breaking a curse over Fresno and over the Central Valley. We are about to see a shift in the church. If that's you all over this room, I want you to raise your hand. I believe this.
Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And for years that bothered me, I said, Lord, Noah preached for 120 years and nobody but his family got saved. And the Lord spoke it back to me one day. He said, but his family got saved. And I believe that we're about to see a move of the Holy Spirit in families. In marriages with our children. We're going to start building altars again in our homes. Altars again in our lives. We're going to smash the idols. We're going to smash the idols. We're going to break the idols. Breaking the idols of pornography. Breaking the idols. Noah built that altar and it says a soothing aroma came up before the Lord. The next time we see it is with Abram and the Lord makes a promise. This land I'm giving to you and your descendants. Abram built an altar and he called on the name of the Lord. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. We're going to smash our idols right here. I'm here to tell you right now, Sunday only Christianity is over. It's over. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, altars, 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 altars. Come on. Lift your hands all over the room. Come on. Release the spirit of prayer. to him right now. Here we are, God. I declare right now the drought is ending. I declare a shift right now. I declare new seasons over your marriage. Some of you are doing business with God right now over that pornography addiction. You need to smash your iPhones. You need to smash your idols. You need to crush your idols. You need to pluck your eye out if it causes you to sin. We smash our idols, everything that has taken precedent, God, over you at the center of our lives. We smash it. Look at him right now all over the room. Thank you, God, right now. I, I want to tell you I've come through the most intense our family has. And there's a shift happening this weekend. I can feel it in the spirit. There's innovation that's coming to Fresno. I can feel it in the spirit. Land is being redeemed. 
The soil is being redeemed. Call on the name of the Lord right now. Every idol, bring it before the Lord. Is it money? Is it pornography? Is it fantasy? Is it religion? I'm here to tell you that God is curing the church of the great cancer called boredom with God. I want to tell you we will worship to the degree that we see him. Your worship is commensurate with the revelation that you have of him. Call on the name of the Lord. I want to just come before you right now. Listen. We're singing this morning about the Holy, Holy One. He is absolutely beautiful. There is no one like our God. There's no one like this man. He is the one through whom the worlds were made. It says in him all things consist and they hold together. And that he upholds all things by the word of his power. He's the brightness of the Father's glory. Can we brag on him for a second? Is that okay? Because the great issue confronting the church, it's called low views of God. The great cancer, the great issue, the great spirit of poverty is you think way too small about him. Have you seen him? No, no, I'm not talking about, are you excited at a conference? When's the last time you cried in your Bible? When's the last time the spirit of burning and one phrase from the word of God got lodged on the inside of you and you couldn't shake it for weeks? He's breaking boredom off the church. He is the everlasting one. The one without beginnings and without bounds and without limits. He is the one who is uncreated. He's the alpha. He is the first. And he's the beginning. Micah saw him. He says there's one coming that's going to rule, whose goings forth are from everlasting. He's the one who is uncreated light and love and power. There's no beginning to his days. He is the everlasting Father. He's the one that measures the heavens with the span of his hand. And he weighs all the mountains and scales and he measures all the waters in the palm of his hand. He's the one that humbles himself to behold the things that are in the universe. He inhabits eternity and his name is holy. He showed up to Job and asked him a hundred questions with the same answer. Were you there when I did Genesis 1? Tell me about constellations. Tell me about Big Bear, Little Bear, and Orion, and all her little clubs. Talk to me about the mating season of the deer. Talk to me about the smallest amoebas in the bottom of the ocean. Tell me if you know. Why is God going to ask a suffering man a hundred questions with the same answer? Because he's saying, Job, if I've got Genesis 1 on my resume, if I'm upholding constellations by the word of my power, and then taking care of the smallest, most minutest details of creation, and upholding everything in between by the word of my power. Listen, listen then surely I know how to take you. You, and you, and you, and you, and you, and bring you forth into the fullness of your destiny with perfect wisdom and power. In the beginning was the Word. All things
things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. And then John released a new tr nuclear bomb on the generations, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He's not only the faraway God, He's the God that got close. He's the God that gets up into your business. He's the vulnerable God, the humble God, the meek God. There's no one like Him. I don't even know how to talk about him. I don't even know how to talk about him. I don't even know how to talk about him. Oh God, that you would open up our eyes. I want to tell you, there's nothing that the Holy Spirit is emphasizing more than the revelation of Jesus Christ. There is nothing that the devil wars over more than the revelation of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing more neglected in the church than the revelation of Jesus Christ. But those days are coming to an end. What would happen if one of those burning creatures who had spent their glad centuries around the throne, what would happen if they're going to do the next session? What would they preach about? Would they not blow our minds of him? I believe that God is raising up a new breed of preachers. God's raising up a new breed of worship leaders who are going to sing and speak from the mount of divine vision. They are going to call a generation out of compromise and out of religion and out of bondage and addiction, saying you were made by him and for him. I believe that two great scales are falling off the church. Scales of religion. Here's what religion sounds like. I know that. You'll always know the spirit of religions in your life when you've settled and you've come to, I know that. Religion settles you. Revelation humbles you. You don't know nothing. Because you worship what you haven't touched. It's mystery that restores worship. Oh, it's time for the spirit of poverty to get broken. It's time for strongholds and arguments to break. It's time for lies to get dethroned. The father of lies, he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. The disciples asked one thing of Jesus, teach us to pray. And you know what Jesus did? He ripped up their prayer list. He says, when you pray, you say, our Father, who art in heaven, holy. Everybody say that. Say, Father, Father heaven, heaven, holy. holy. Say it again. Say, Father, Father heaven, heaven, holy. holy. Say it again. Say, Father, Father heaven, heaven, holy. holy. I believe that God's releasing an authority, a Psalm 24 authority, to open up gates for King Jesus to ride into this city. Open up you gates, be lifted up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Father, we ask you right now all over this room that you would release the spirit of revelation. I believe God's breaking religion. Listen. And God's breaking the power of perversion and pornography off a generation. 
We're going to get our eyes back. We're going to get our eyes back. Because to worship him, to see him is to worship him. And when you get your eyes open, your lips get exposed. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips because my eyes have seen. Which means this, we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know who we're talking about. And I long for the spirit of revelation to flood the central valley like the waters cover the sea. I believe that God wants to cleanse our eyes, break the scales of religion and the scales of perversion. He wants to break it off of us and usher us into a new season. I'm going to ask you all over the room, put your hands over your eyes. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance right now. Revelation 1 says Jesus has eyes like fire. I want you to see the burning man right now. And we're going to ask him to cleanse us right now. Just say, Jesus. Jesus. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I ask you to forgive me for opening my eyes to all forms of perversion, all forms of religion. Father, I ask you to forgive me. I ask for the blood of Jesus, the blood shed at Calvary to wash over me now from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I want my thoughts to be clean, my emotions to be clean, and my desires to be clean. I receive your cleansing, Jesus. I receive your washing, Jesus. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me in your blood. I receive. I believe that your blood is stronger than my most shameful sin. In the name of Jesus, I shut the door to darkness. I break agreement with darkness. And I sever every tie with darkness. And in the name of Jesus, I open up new doors. Doors of light. Doors of revelation. Doors of encounter. In the name of Jesus, Satan, I command you, leave my mind, leave my emotions, leave my desires. You are not my master, and I'm not your servant. Jesus is my master, and I'm his servant. So I command you to go. Go, 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 go. Now lift your hands all over the room. Say, Father of glory, in the name of Jesus, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I want to see Jesus like I've never seen Jesus. I want to hear Jesus like I've never heard Jesus. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes! Open my eyes! Now I'm going to ask you all over the room now to begin to pray in the Spirit. And I want you to just begin to whisper to the Lord all over the room, open my eyes. We're going to go into worship now. I believe that God is going to anoint altar builders in Fresno. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Louder. Go. 
voices. I want to keep singing this. Just the voices. our hands right now. Touch our hands. Touch our eyes. Touch our ears. Touch our feet. Touch our spirits, God. We say, Jesus, first place in our hearts. Altars in our homes. Altars in our hearts. Release the blood of Jesus all over this room right now. The great cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Just receive it right now. Let's sing that one more time. Holy sing it right to him. <laughs> 